excuse me. Uh, 20 minutes away from 4 o'clock, coastal residents in the western and eastern Cape recovering from the effects of those very high tides that swept through the area over the weekend. Also, uh, severe damage in KZN, especially the south coast. Now, sadly, an elderly woman died after being swept away by some of the violent waves. Uh, what is the importance of understanding this? How did we uh, get to this point? What has changed? Is this a freak accident or can we expect more of this? Well, I'm joined by Tandile Chianvano from, the, from Greenpeace uh, to discuss this. Tandile, hello to you. Good to have you with us. So uh, just give me a sense about what uh, you made of the videos yeah, you that you were seeing uh, over the weekend. Uh, was this a freak accident or do you think we could start seeing more of this? Good afternoon and thank you so much for having me. Um, so the impact of what we've seen happening this weekend is a combination of a number of factors. It's um, the spring tide, cold front, cold, um, gale force winds, rough sea conditions. But primarily what's important is that um, the spring tides can be exacerbated by um, climate change and rising sea levels as a result. So this is definitely something that we could start to see more occurring, mm -hmm. although spring tides are a natural phenomenon that are influenced by um, the gravitational pull of the moon and the earth. Um, the impact that we're seeing with rising sea levels could have a devastating impact on this phenomenon already and start to, we could potentially start to see a lot more of these conditions unfolding um, across the world, uh, but particularly here in South Africa as well. Yeah, we were talking about the Eastern and Western Cape, but those visuals we saw there, uh, if you just joined us, that was from Mariner's Restaurant down in Marina Bay. It's Kayser in South Coast, so it was all the way along the coastline. Sandile, we still have climate change denialists. Help them understand why you say that this is linked to climate change. There are those who are going to say, no, it's not. It's the spring tide uh, and also the cold front. How do you convince them otherwise? Well, of course, the, there is that reality that we do still need to wait for the consensus from scientists to affirm that this is directly related to the climate crisis um, and recognizing that it is a natural phenomenon that tends to take place. But unfortunately, we're starting to see a lot more events like this take place. And um, there is scientific consensus that um, climate change can exacerbate the conditions of spring tides. Um, so. Primarily what we could say to, to convince them is just that scientists have, have um, already come to the consensus that climate change is real and that it is going to be exacerbating a number of conditions across the world, particularly in Africa. We're likely to see rising sea levels, we're likely to see more drought-like conditions in certain parts of the country, and we're seeing a lot more cyclones and flooding in other parts of, of the continent as well. It's something that we, we've already begun to see the impacts unfolding, um, and it's something that can no longer afford to be denied. We need action at this point. Yeah, I don't think there's too many people who can deny it. You just look at the flooding in Libya, uh, which is going to be one of the most bizarre incidents uh, in, in many, many years, seeing flooding in Libya, thousands of people dying. Here's the problem with uh, what Greenpeace is trying to achieve, and I'd like to get your thoughts. Uh, I always get a sense that many people don't take climate change very seriously. Maybe it's because it's happening too slowly. We're too worried about issues of crime, unemployment, housing, finances, the economy. We don't, uh, don't take climate change very seriously. Whose fault is that? Is it the public or is it government? Of course, we have competing priorities um, of, of importance in, in this mindset of, of South Africans. We have a number of issues that are pressing to us, um, chief amongst them, load shedding. And of course, it's quite difficult to prioritize issues like climate change when you feel that your most immediate threat is your energy security issues, being able to access energy, being safe in your communities. So it, it can tend to feel like it's it takes less of a priority because we've not begun to see the tangible impacts of it unfolding. Mm. Uh, but the reality is that it is actually unfolding at a cat catastrophically fast rate. And we need to see drastic action taken immediately to stop events like this. And those, as you mentioned, this past week flooding across the world, um, taking place. We need definitive action to address that. Government definitely does have a role to play in um, raising awareness about these issues and ensuring that the, 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 um, the citizens are conscientized about the risk of climate change. And not only that, but they are resilient in the face of some of the challenges that they're going to start to see. Uh, but there's definitely a role for everyone to play in terms of conscientizing yourself about what the risks of climate change are, how it impacts you on your daily lives and ensuring that um, and ensuring that we're actually um, 
calling out for our government to take definitive action mm. to prevent such disasters from continuing to unfold. What does that look like? Talk yeah. to me about that, Tandili. What does uh, immediate dramatic action look like? Because I feel like you, uh, it, Greenpeace and climate activists have been drumming uh, this into government for years, but I don't think governments and many people understand what that actually means. Give me something tangible, give me something practical that maybe those of us watching at home can try and do to at least slow this down. Well, there would be different um, implementations that could be taken at different types of levels. So, for example, at an urban scale, we're starting to see these floods causing catastrophic damage. What would be necessary is for our municipal municipalities to take measures to ensure that the infrastructure is equipped to withstand the extreme weather events. Um, in Johannesburg, of course, over the past couple of years, we've seen flood-like conditions and we've seen um, a, a, quite a bit of damage to infrastructure. Um, similarly, in KZN, um, everyone remembers those catastrophic scenes of the infrastructure damage that was caused. Um, and these these disasters are costing municipalities in the to the tune of billions to try mm -hmm. and fix the damage. And it's very important that they are implementing strategies and um, infrastructure mechanisms to ensure that the community, that the infrastructure is not terribly impacted by this. This would mean um, rehabilitating our roads, rehabilitating our bridges, ensuring that they're equipped for the ex the extreme weather events that we're likely to see. Yeah. At, a, at a rural level, it would be implementations to equip farmers to be able to withstand, um, equipping them with knowledge and skills around climate smart farming to ensure that we are not as impacted in terms of our crops as a result of these extreme weather events, because um, there's quite a bit of damage as well and loss that is being incurred by farmers um, and and small homesteads as a result of these extreme Yeah, once events. you start talking money, start uh, people start paying more attention when they start losing uh, money very quickly. Tandile, as I say goodbye to you, ongoing debate, I'm sure you know this in South Africa, it's our electricity issue, it's our blackouts concerns. Uh, we are going to continue using coal simply to keep our lights on. What is Greenpeace's uh, stance on this? Do we keep our lights on or do we look after the environment? Well, it's not something that is mutually exclusive. The conversation around climate change and energy cannot be decoupled uh, from each other. We can't afford to do that at this stage. Um, Greenpeace Africa has been resolute in our message that we need to move away from the polluting carbon um, fossil fuels such as coal and oil and gas and recognize the potential of renewable energy to be able to meet our, our energy needs and deliver energy in a safe, equitable manner that allows for people that are... Um, that allows for us to access energy in a safe, equitable way that is safe for all as a result of um, coal, which is impacting drastically um, the health mm. conditions of people in the high felt region. So we need to move away from this polluting model and towards one that is cleaner, greener and safer for everyone. Tandile, always good to hear from you. I'm sure we'll talk again in the not too distant future. Tandile Chinyavanu, climate and energy campaigner at Greenpeace Africa, taking us up to quarter to four on this edition of today.